Okay, this is just a short video discussing applications of factoring. This is, of course, also known as word problems. So this is where we get to see some of the skills we've been learning related to factoring applied. So I'll actually just do one example here, but before we get into the example, let's just talk about our general strategy. These six steps can really be applied to problem solving at any level. Um, but it will help guide us through the one example we'll look at. So first, read the problem. Uh, this means make sure you've read it for understanding. You could kind of spit back what the problem is asking for, what's given. This step often involves drawing a picture. Uh, then we'll need to define the variable or variables based on what the wording of the question has indicated. Then this third step is perhaps the most challenging, and that is writing an equation that relates the variables given um, in the situation. Once it's written, normally it's pretty smooth sailing from there in terms of solving the equation. Then, of course, when we get a solution such as x equals 2, we need to interpret what the solution means in the context. So by state the solution, you might be writing a short sentence um, or a short phrase, but make sure to include units of measure. And then last but not least, always a good idea to check your work. So these six steps will kind of be in the background as we try an example together. The example that we're working on here really is asking us just to set up the equation. We might go ahead and walk through the solving just for fun. But let's go ahead and read through and see if we can start sketching based on the wording. All right, so set up an equation that models the application problem below. You don't have to solve it. I am going to mail a box of oranges to a friend so I can start get in my box here and it looks like I'm told I have a box that has a volume of 2640 cubic inches so I happen to know the volume of the box okay so that's an important number I also know that the box is 22 inches long okay so I'm actually given one of the dimensions so I'm going to say that the length to me is just going to be this dimension along the front edge here. So I'll label that as 22 as I'm reading through the problem. We also know that the width is 2 inches more than the height. And that phrase right there is probably the most confusing part. So we'll come back to that in just a second. Then the punchline is what are the dimensions of the box? Okay. So we know this box has a length, which we've already labeled as 22, right? So this would be considered the length here. And I'll go ahead and refer to the width as this dimension going back this way. And then the third dimension to this box would be the height. So that would be like this piece here. Okay, so we know the length already is 22 inches, but we need to know how the width and the height are related. So let's go back one more time to this sentence, or this phrase here. Oops. So the width of the box is 2 inches more than the height. So I like adding better than, better than subtracting. So if I let the height be h, so if h stands for the height, which we've already kind of used it in that way, then I think we can use h now to describe the width because the width is 2 inches more than the height. So if I take the height and add 2, that becomes a definition for the width. And again, like I said, I think that h plus 2 piece is probably the hardest part of this one. Um, it could have been easy to say let w be width and then accidentally say w plus 2 is height. So we have to make sure we understand the relationship between those two. All right, so just reading through the sentence again, I'm going to mail a box of oranges to a friend. Oh yeah, so have some oranges in here. Give your brain a second to process what's happening. And the box has a volume. Oh, the volume I haven't used yet. Okay, so I know the volume is 2,640 cubic inches. We know the length, that was our 22 inches. We know that the width is two more than the height. So we already said the width is the height plus two. And we're just letting H stand for the height. So then the question becomes, 
What formula relates the variables when we're talking about geometry of a box of a rectangular solid? So you may recall the formula volume equals length times width times height. That would be the volume of a box like what we have here. So if we take that formula that's true all the time and we start plugging in our values in this problem, we already said that V is 2640. We said that length is 22. We said that width is h plus 2. And we said that height can just be h. Oops, sorry, I keep doing that. So height is just h. Now, one important thing to notice on this right hand side it's a product. So it's 22 times h plus 2 times h. So we'll keep that in mind when we actually go to solving. But in terms of setting up the equation, which is what the directions for the problem indicated, we're actually done right here. This would be the equation that models the situation being described. But I know you're all dying to solve it, so we can definitely talk through that part as well. So if you need to, pause and just kind of make sure you feel comfortable with the setup. If it feels good, I'm just going to go ahead and move to the next page here and rewrite the equation we just had, and let's talk about solving it. So we had 2640 is equal to 22 times h plus 2 times h. We have a couple options in terms of solving. Um, of course, the fastest way is not the best way, but one thing we can work on as we get more comfortable with algebra is being efficient where possible. What I mean by that in this case is Many times we're often inclined to just start distributing over here on the right hand side and cleaning up. But I noticed that number 22, and I'm interested, does the left hand side 2640 divide by it? And if so, wouldn't this equation look a little bit nicer if we made our numbers smaller? So I'll leave you to verify, but I think that 2640 does divide evenly by 22. I think that'll give us 120. So that'd be a good time maybe to pull out a calculator and double check. And again, that was an optional step, but I like the way the equation looks when I divide by 22 because it removed the factor of 22 on the right hand side and it made the number smaller on the left. So just one idea to throw out there. If you're okay with that, um, then it looks like the next step in our process would be to distribute the h to the h plus 2. So distributing is normally a pretty intuitive step, so sometimes we do it without thinking too much. But our reason for doing so is really that we're trying to get this equation into a standard form. When we talk about solving by factoring, the standard form is to get a quadratic equation, an equation with an x squared and an x and a number, really set equal to zero. So by distributing, I'm getting closer to that standard form. The next step to get to that standard form would be to subtract 120 from both sides so that it is set to 0 like we already mentioned. So now we have 0 equaling h squared plus 2h minus 120. And at this point you should be looking at this nice trinomial here and saying okay good I'm back to just kind of our old factoring techniques. So as we prepare for that process. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into my two binomials, starting with h and h, since h times h is h squared. Now I'm asking myself, what are two factors of the end number, the negative 120, two factors of that number that add to the middle value of 2? And you can kind of stop and think through it. Another option would be just to make an organized list of factors. I know that since it's a negative 120, it will take one negative and one positive. So I'm just starting to list a few options here. And I might just do a, a dot 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 to indicate you could keep going. Feel free to pause and find it on your own. But without too much trouble, we'll start getting to numbers like negative 10 and 12. And the sum of negative 10 and 12 is the positive 2 that we're looking for. So that tells me my factored form would be h minus 10 times h plus 12. So those are the two binomials when we factor. 
Then what's happening from here in terms of solving is we're saying, okay, we have something times something equaling zero. So that means either this first something or this second something must be set to zero. If h minus 10 is equal to zero, we can add 10 to both sides and get that h is equal to 10. If h plus 12 is set to zero, subtracting 12 from both sides, we would find h to equal negative 12. If this were truly just a solving problem outside of the context that we're in, both solutions would be valid. However, since this is an application, we're talking about the lengths of the sides of a box in this case. Specifically, we're talking about the height of the box. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this solution of negative 12 is illogical in the context, since we don't want a negative height and that means that h equals 10 would be logical in this context. So now is a good time to actually state the solution, what we found, what it means in the situation we were given. So I'll just jot a little sentence up top here. We can say uh, the height of the box, that's what we just solved for, is 10 and let's see, the unit in this case would be inches, right? Our volume was given in cubic inches, so the dimensions themselves are inches. We knew at the beginning the length was 22 inches, so the other unknown would be the width. And to be fair, let me go back to our picture. We had said together that if H stands for the height, then we can simply add two onto that and we'll get the width. So that means if our width, or sorry, if our height was 10 inches, the width is just two more than that. So that means the width is 12 inches. So this simple statement right here is really interpreting what we found in the context, making our answer meaningful to the viewer. So hopefully we've done good work, but it always is a good idea to check. And I know I'm working between a few different pages here. So at this point, when we think back to the original box we had been talking about, I'm just going to write in what the dimensions we found were. We found the dimensions to be, well, we were given the length of 22 inches, and we just stated that the height should be 10 inches, and the width should be 12 inches. We were also told at the very beginning that the volume of the box was known to be 2,640. So a way for us to check our work is to say, if it's true that volume is equal to length times width times height, that means that the given volume here of 2,640 should be equal to the product of 22, 12, and 10. So bust out a calculator if you'd like. 22 times 12 times 10 does in fact give back 2,640, so we've done good work. So hopefully this helps clarify a little bit of the problem solving process. The good news is you all are extremely capable of word problems, but it does take some practice and you do have to give yourself some time. So just be willing to commit that time and you'll be prepared. Hopefully this helps.